What's up y'all, it's GC Kinsey, here to answer a question that I wondered about for a long time. If I'm non-binary, can I call myself gay? Before I get any deeper into this, yes, the answer is yes. If you are non-binary, you absolutely can call yourself gay. But this can be a point of self-doubt for a lot of us. So I wanted to get into why that is, what makes the labels of gay or lesbian valid for us to use, and how we can be more confident in calling ourselves what feels right. The language we have for orientations is limited, and much like everything else in society, it wasn't developed with non-binary people in mind. At the time when we started using words like gay and lesbian, Non-binary people didn't have the words to describe ourselves or the community or the visibility that we have today, so we were left out of the equation. What was driving the equation was homophobia. People of the same gender who were attracted to each other and had relationships with each other faced discrimination for that and still do to this day. So it made sense that we needed words like gay for men who are attracted to other men or lesbian for women who are attracted to other women. That way, same gender attracted people could band together around their common experiences and form community to fight oppression. But of course, what that means now is we have this very binary centric framework about how men and women experience same gender or opposite gender attraction and non-binary people are left to squeeze ourselves into this framework the best we can, just like we have to do for sports or bathrooms or anything else. It would be a lot easier for us if all orientation labels worked like bisexual or pansexual or asexual, describing the way we experience attraction without bringing our own gender into it. Or alternatively, it might be easier if we had a more expansive set of monosexual attraction labels than just gay, lesbian, and straight. If we had words for things like men attracted to envies, envies attracted to men, women attracted to envies, envies attracted to women, envies attracted to other envies, and so on. The queer community has come up with a lot of terms for things like this, but they're not widely used. And it's not really a perfect solution either because non-binary isn't a gender, it's really more of a catch-all category for any gender that isn't strictly man or woman. So to make that more expansive system of terms really work, you would need words for things like men attracted to gender fluid people, bi-gender people attracted to women, gender queer people attracted to agender people, and so on. The list would get very long and would constantly change to keep up with being inclusive enough. So then we'd probably end up with a system that was too complicated for most people to keep track of and we'd end up right back at square one where we are. Cramming ourselves into the current system that's too simple and not inclusive enough to let us feel confident in calling ourselves gay. I guess in the technical sense of the definition, gay already works for NBs who are attracted to other NBs, right? It's same gender attraction, broadly speaking. But if that's you, you'll probably have to explain that's what you mean because First of all, people forget that NBs even exist, but then when they know you're non-binary, they probably won't know who you mean you're attracted to if you say, I'm gay. I've also heard some people make the case that if you're non-binary, then no matter who you're attracted to, it's always going to be at least somewhat gay, because we bring an inherent queerness to any relationship by virtue of falling outside the gender binary in the first place. While I 100% agree with that sentiment, I also want to point out that using a label like gay or lesbian when you're not a man or a woman can be complicated. You might have some conflicted feelings about calling yourself a word that doesn't include your gender by default. Does that mean you're erasing your gender? Are you technically misgendering yourself? Are others more likely to misgender you or shove you into a binary box you're not comfortable with? Will a partner struggle to understand and respect you in a relationship? And then you also have to contend with the expectations of binary men and women who use the terms gay and lesbian but maybe don't think of them in a non-binary inclusive way. For example, if you're a transmasculine NB like myself and you're attracted to men, then you might think, well, gay isn't an exact fit, but it's close enough. But that doesn't mean the other gay guys in your community are going to agree with you if they're defining it strictly as men attracted to other men. And I think that ties into another issue for non-binary people who call themselves gay or lesbian. 
The fear that they're co-opting terms that don't really belong to them and that they don't really deserve. This is something that I have personally struggled with quite a lot, and it stems from the way my dynamic with gay men has changed throughout the course of my transition. When I still mistakenly thought I was a woman, and the rest of the world did too, my friendships with gay men were strictly friendships. There was this automatic assumption that we would never be interested in each other romantically, and that was what made our friendships so great. There was never that potential relationship danger. But when you're attracted to men, and then you transition to a more masculine place, suddenly you're like, oh, this attraction is gay now. And then you're left with all these doubts about whether the gay men in your life will accept you as one of them, or whether the shift from straight woman friend to fellow gay friend will make your friendship weird. And in my case, this is all complicated even further by the fact that I'm technically not even a man, I'm a transmasculine envy. So are my gay friends going to be okay with me deciding that the label they've already been using for themselves is now close enough for me to? What finally got me over this hurdle was going to my local Pride Festival in 2019. I wore this, and I walked into the club for the drag show full of confidence, and I got hit on by at least a dozen gay guys. Which was shocking, and honestly one of the most affirming things that has ever happened to me. And also a little bit weird because I'm ace, but hey, if a bunch of gay dudes think I'm hot, I am not going to complain about that. That experience taught me that I actually could be accepted by gay men as one of them, even though I'm not cis or strictly a man. And it made me feel a whole lot more secure in using the word gay to describe myself. If you're still struggling to get to that place, here are a few things that I recommend you keep in mind. First, labels shouldn't feel like restrictive boxes. They're meant to be helpful tools. Human beings are way too complicated to fit the exact definition of any label, so I tend to think of them more like starting points for uniting people around a common set of experiences. So from that perspective, who cares if you're non-binary and the labels of gay and lesbian weren't made with you in mind? If they feel affirming to you, use them. After all, who's gonna stop you? The label police? Second. The reasons why a label might feel affirming will vary from person to person, and whatever your reasons are, they're valid. In my case, the word gay feels affirming because it describes a part of queer culture that has always had a huge influence on me, and a part of the community where I have always felt at home. And as someone who uses he him pronouns, likes wearing facial hair, generally wants to be perceived as masculine, and is attracted to other masculine-leaning people, Gay is a simple and straightforward way to explain all that. And third, the label of non-binary isn't contradictory or mutually exclusive with the labels of gay and lesbian. And the more visible the non-binary community becomes, the more people will understand that. There are already some queer folks using more expansive definitions of gay and lesbian. For example, I've seen lesbian defined as non-men attracted to other non-men, not strictly as women attracted to other women. And I think that kind of push for more inclusivity is only going to keep growing as non-binary people gain more recognition and respect in society. So back to the original question, if I'm non-binary, can I call myself gay? I hope now you understand exactly why the answer to that is yes. And I hope that if the word gay or lesbian feels right to you, you don't have any more doubts or fears about using it. Just remember, if anyone tries to tell you that you don't get to call yourself gay because of your non-binary gender, ignore that transphobic attempt at gatekeeping and call yourself whatever you want. You deserve it. And with that, now it's time to turn things over to you and get your perspective. If you're non-binary and also gay, have you ever struggled with wondering whether you get to call yourself that? What does being both non-binary and gay mean to you? How would you like to see the way we talk about orientations change to be more inclusive? What questions do you have about all this? I would love to hear from you, so please drop a comment below and let's get a discussion going.
You can also reach out to me on other social media. I'm GC Kinsey across all platforms. And while you're here, feel free to stick around and check out one of my other videos. I have more vlogs like this one about my experiences as a queer person, along with cosplay music videos, makeup demos, pre-testosterone voice recordings, and more right here on this channel. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss anything new. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all of your support. I hope you learned a lot and I will see you on the next one.